I am at once physician, a citizen, and a woman, and I am not willing to stand aside and allow this concept of expendable human lives to turn this great land of ours into just another exclusive reservation where only the perfect, the privileged, and the planned have the right to live. Mildred Faye Jefferson was born April 6, 1926, in Pittsburgh, a little town set among the piney woods of East Central Texas. She was the only child of Millard and Guthrie Jefferson, a Methodist minister and a school teacher. Growing up outside the small town of Carthage, Texas, children were taught at an early age to declaim their lessons, a skill that would serve Mildred later in life. The community of Carthage encouraged every child to reach for their dreams. Seeing the old-time family doctor who readily made house calls in his buggy inspired young Millie to become a doctor herself. And, and I would follow him around asking questions, and he would always answer my questions. And when I said, well, when I grow up, I think I want to be a doctor just like you. And he said, well, now, if you want to do that, you just go right ahead. She did just that. After graduating from high school at 15, Mildred attended Texas College, and because at age 18 she was still too young to enter medical school, she received a master's degree in biology from Tufts University. At age 20, she became the first African-American woman to be accepted to Harvard Medical School. After graduating, she applied for and was accepted to a surgical internship at Boston City Hospital, another first for a woman, and later became the first female doctor at the former Boston University Medical Center. As the Boston Globe observed at the time of her death, Dr. Mildred Jefferson broke many race and gender barriers during her long career as a doctor. But it was when she turned to politics, emerging four decades ago as an eloquent leader of the anti-abortion movement, that she began to win a following. And in 1970, uh, in earnest, there were groups going around the country promoting what they called abortion reform. And already writing in magazines, there was an ad man called Lawrence Later who was writing about abortion reform. So that um, in the active way that they've always advanced, accompanying the effort to get the laws changed was an effort uh, to create a model penal code. Concerned with the pro-abortion efforts to change the laws in Massachusetts, Dr. Jefferson became one of the founders of the Massachusetts Citizens for Life. That ultimately led her to the board of the National Right to Life Committee in 1971. Putting to use the public speaking skills she learned as a child in Carthage, Dr. Jefferson seemingly made it her personal mission to reach as many people across the country as possible with the pro-life message that every human life, from the moment of fertilization until natural death, is worthy of the protection of our laws. You cannot, you cannot match her on TV. She was incredible. Nobody could really match her or beat her when it came to discussing and, and, uh, and arguing the issues for life. She was incomparable. In late 1972, Dr. Jefferson appeared on The Advocates, a television program produced by the local PBS affiliate in Boston. It would air nationwide. So great was her eloquence and passion for defending human life that it caused one politician to completely rethink his views on the issue of abortion, a conversion that would ultimately impact pro-life efforts for decades to come. Shortly after the show aired, he wrote to Dr. Jefferson, I hope you won't mind my writing to you, but I had to tell you how truly great you were in your testimony on the Advocates program regarding abortion. Yours was the most clear-cut exposition of this problem I have ever heard. Several years ago, I was faced with the issue of whether to sign a California abortion bill. I must confess to never having given the matter of abortion any serious thought until that time. No other issue since I have been in office has caused me to do so much study and soul searching. I wish I could have heard your views before our legislation was passed. You made it irrefutably clear that an abortion is the taking of human life. I'm grateful to you. Sincerely, Ronald Reagan. When the Supreme Court legalized abortion in 1973, the pro-life movement quickly gained momentum in every state. 
National Right to Life's network of state affiliates and local chapters, as well as its representative board of directors, increased. Sitting as the representative of Massachusetts Citizens for Life, Mildred Jefferson was elected vice chairman of the NRLC board in June 1973. The following year, she was elected chairman of the board, and in 1975, she became president of National Right to Life. Her election as president catapulted Mildred Jefferson and her unmatched ability to articulate the pro-life message further onto the national stage. She was a highly sought-after speaker and traveled the country extensively speaking at state and local right-to-life events and conventions. Dr. Jefferson received numerous honorary degrees and awards from institutions across the country, including, most notably, an honorary degree from College of the Holy Cross, which she received alongside another staunch advocate for life, Mother Teresa of Calcutta. These opportunities were used to share National Right to Life's life-affirming message and philosophy. She would speak wherever she had the opportunity to share the beauty of life, regardless of whether her audience was pro-life or not. Appearing at a Minnesota women's conference in the 1970s, Mildred Jefferson captivated an entire auditorium. Reporting on Dr. Jefferson's travels, the National Right to Life News remarked, the favorable press she generates for the Right to Life cause is unique and a welcome byproduct of her many talents. As she jets from city to city, scarcely a metropolitan daily fails to report her presence. Her gift for oratory was such that the great orator and pro-life champion Congressman Henry Hyde once remarked that the best strategy for the pro-life movement would be to have someone pay Dr. Jefferson just to travel around the country and speak out on behalf of the unborn. Dr. Jefferson would use her credentials as a surgeon and the fact that she was a woman as a springboard to talk about protecting life and the realities of abortion at conventions, in the press, and in numerous appearances before various congressional committees. In one congressional appearance in 1981, she told members, with the obstetrician and mother becoming the worst enemy of the child and the pediatrician becoming the assassin for the family, the state must be enabled to protect the child, born and unborn. During those congressional appearances, Dr. Jefferson certainly encountered pro-abortion members of Congress and knew it fell to pro-lifers to change the political tide in the country. Dr. Jefferson's vision came to fruition in 1980 with the establishment of the National Right to Life Political Action Committee. As a direct result of that vision, over the past three decades, NRL PAC has helped provide the margin of victory that sent hundreds of pro-life men and women to the nation's halls of power in both the Capitol and the White House. Whether it was testifying before Congress, speaking before a group of concerned pro-life citizens, or talking one-on-one -on -one with a friend or colleague, the effusive Dr. Jefferson connected with every person to whom she spoke. The sanctity and dignity of every human person from fertilization to natural death. It was a universal message from a universal orator. Dr. Jefferson knew this was a cause that would bring together a cross-section of America. Writing in the 1977 National Right to Life Convention book, she observed, 
We come together from all parts of our land, we who are known as the Right to Life people. We come rich and poor, proud and plain, religious and agnostic, politically committed and independent. We can only agree on our respect for life and our determination to defend the right to life. After devoting decades of working to protect the most vulnerable, Mildred Jefferson never thought of quitting. She continued to share the pro-life message to all who would listen. Indeed, she was determined to inspire and involve the next generation of pro-life activists, ensuring that the pro-life movement would be successful well into the 21st century. Dr. Mildred Faye Jefferson left this world on October 15, 2010, at age 84. But she left behind a legacy of dedication and service to a calling greater than oneself. It is a legacy that will continue to inspire and bring people to the cause of life for decades to come. And remember, the fight for the right to life is not the cause of a special few, but the cause of every man, woman, and child who cares not only about his or her own family, but the whole family of man. Mm -hmm.